If you could just say and spell your first and last name and then tell me your um, role here. Okay, my name is Mike and it's M-I-K-E Griffiths, G-R-I-F-F-I-T-H-S. I was the assistant principal uh, when Dakota went to school here, but now I'm a uh, principal of the virtual academy. We have a new virtual school, so that's my new role. That sounds good. Great. Um, why don't we start by, um, to you, if you can just describe Dakota Meyer in your own words. To describe Dakota Meyer, uh, it's, it's one of those things, he, he's such a well-rounded individual. Uh, a person with a lot of passion for whatever he was involved in, whether it was athletics or, or whatever he you know took part in. He was always uh, an athlete that came early, stayed late. Uh, always wanted to know what was on the practice schedule. And as a student, uh, you know, he was one of those ones that uh, not necessarily was just your normal everyday student. You know, he's a student that wanted to do more. I wanted to be challenged and challenged you on a daily basis. And as my role as assistant principal, got to know him really well because of that. Uh, but he had a great passion for uh, needy children. Uh, and the students that were in special ed program loved him because Dakota would spend time with them and, and do things with them that sometimes others wouldn't. And uh, he looked at that as, as something, as a reward for uh, being able to have a special class. So he got to work with those kids. And I really think that that uh, kind of drove him because uh, it was a challenge. Those were challenged students and he liked to be challenged. Um, when he told you he was going to join the Marines, what did you think? Cause that in itself is a pretty large challenge. Well, it did not. It, it did not surprise me. Uh, when you're an athlete and, and you've been a, a part of a team and, and you've been in a team environment uh, your entire life, that did that didn't really surprise me that he was going to do that. What uh, what surprised me is that uh, I knew that he would go in with the same passion he does everything else, and and I know his work level and that kind of thing. And I knew that when he went in the Marines, he was really going to be challenged to the ultimate, and uh, not only physically but mentally. And when you know you're 17 years old, uh, and really being from a rural area and maybe not exposed to everything that you're getting ready to be exposed to, I knew those were going to be more of the challenges than the physical part would be, and uh, that that was kind of a concern. And, and we discussed those. Uh, I know that he had talked about going and trying to play college football, and and he had been beaten and banged up a little bit, and. Uh, I really felt like if, if he could get in the Marines and do well, it would be a great career for him. And, and a lot of times in rural areas, there's not a lot you know, of things for you know, students that age to do unless you just go to a four-year school. So uh, I thought that it would be something that he could make a career of. Come on, come on. Let me put you over. Okay. Coming off. Not good. Good. Okay, ready? Yeah. Um, when you first heard about what happened over in Afghanistan, uh, and you heard about what Dakota did, uh, what impact did that have on you? What, what were your what went through your mind? Well, uh, you know the the big thing is I got the phone call. Uh, he was training in Hawaii, and uh, I knew something was tremendously different. And he really did, could not say where he was going to go, what he was going to be doing. But he just told me he said, you know, it's just not going to be good. Uh, and they, I think, for, for months had been training them for that. And of course, his job, their, their group's job was first in. They were the first in. And, uh, and I'm really not sure what that meant, but he just told me that what they'd been training for was not, not real, real good. And that, uh, you know, that he was, he was concerned. And basically, that was the end of our conversation until uh, that he came back out. And, uh, and you know, the, he really couldn't talk about the situation because he was emotional. I was emotional about the situation. When he came home, uh, you know, he called me. And of course, he had to spend some time in the hospital and those kind of things. And uh, but he came out and spent a long time at my house. And we did. We walked around the farm. We did a lot of talking. And uh, I have a, a son that's uh, that was nine years old at the time that loved to shoot guns. So Dakota, you know, being the weapon mastery that he has, uh, they had he, you know. He took my son, and they, you know, they they talked. So uh, it was one of those things that uh, when he came home, uh, you know, you could tell there was something brutally different. He couldn't discuss that. He couldn't discuss what had taken place. Uh, but I do know that uh, it was very difficult for him. I think that he felt like that he could talk to me about what took place, but he wasn't near ready to discuss it. And of course, in the military, you know, you have things that you can't tell uh, and I think that was one of the things that was very difficult for him because he needed to tell somebody what he had been through uh, and you know he would call me at different times of the day or night um, and we would have discussions and you know he said one day I'll, I'll be able to discuss this with you and 
but you know he, he might only talk for a minute he might talk for five minutes because we had that kind of relationship uh, but he needed to talk to somebody and you know he, he would call me at midnight or you know one o'clock in the morning uh, but uh, you know I think that this this that took place with him you know and, and once again being on a team you know he, he really the, the, the conversation you know he let his team down that was that was the first first conversation but he couldn't go and elaborate but you know that I knew that you know when he told me when he made the first phone call before they went you know, I knew it was going to be tough you know we, we've lost uh, students that have gone to school here in in war in Iraq uh, and you know the roadside bombs and those type of things so I knew that it was going to be bad he knew that it was going to be bad but you know you don't realize how bad and nobody could you know nobody could ever understand how bad except the person that's going through it and uh, you know I know that the rest of his life this is going to be a, a situation that, that he has to deal with and work through and and I hope that everybody supports him and understands you know uh, receiving the Medal of Honor it, it's an award but uh, I don't think people realize know how Dakota actually feels uh, because being his coach and, and working with him uh, that's not what he went to Iraq for you know he he went to defend his country uh, that was important to him being a part of that team was important those guys on that team was important to him and uh, you know I, I don't want people to misconstrue this at all because he still feels responsible what kind of impact has Dakota had on your life Well, in my life, like I say, uh, I, I look at every kid that I come in contact with. I try to find something positive about them, and and um, you know, uh, he's had an impact because um, if he had a problem, or not necessarily a problem, I always kind of looked at those as opportunities with Dakota because I knew that he was a, a driven person, and I'm I, I'm I'm me and him kind of get along because we're a lot the same way. We can say things to each other that might other people might not understand. But uh, if, if he really needed to say something he couldn't say to somebody else, he could say it to me. And maybe I came back and maybe it wasn't real positive when I came back sometimes, but it's something that he needed to hear. Uh, you know, that's the type of relationship that we've had. And, uh, you know, I think that his impact on my life has been that, you know, that every child that comes through the doors of a school, uh, teachers don't realize the impact that they have on that person. Uh, you know, uh, and that impact that they're going to have on them, and you know, you don't uh, every day you, you don't really realize. Uh, you know, you, you have students that go out that are very successful at things, but you don't think about these type of situations. And, and Dakota's, you know, he's impacted my entire family. You know, my kids are close to him. Uh, he came and was the grand marshal of our Christmas parade here, and you know, I've got pictures in my house of, of my kids and him in his uniform, and you know, they're very proud of him because you know, I look at him like I say as my own child. So. Uh, we have that kind of relationship and uh, you know there's been I know I've let him down and disappoint him and, and on the other hand he's done the same with me you know we we you know like I say that kind of thing's a two-way street but uh, uh, I'm very proud of him just because he served his country. What was he like to coach? Uh, very challenging very challenging uh, you know Dakota's a guy that uh, you know uh, as a coach you know you want that guy on your team because he's going to go a hundred percent every play you don't have to tell him to go 100 percent in practice you did not have to tell him to go 100 percent you did not have to tell him to lift weights you don't have to tell him to run you didn't have to tell him to train uh, he's the type of guy that's your team uh, the thing with Dakota because of his leadership qualities in that uh, sometimes he pushed others over the edge you know, uh, because, you know, leaders, in a sense, when you outwork others, you know, you make it hard on them, you know, and uh, because if a coach compares you, you say, you know, why don't you be more like Dakota? If, if that comes up, you know, players don't like that. Uh, but also in the sense that, you know, if others see you working hard, you know, everybody else catches on, you know, this guy wants to do something special. And that was the whole thing with Dakota as a coach, you know, he wanted to do something special. He just didn't want to be just, I just don't want to play football. I want to be a great player. And uh, that's a thing that I can tell you that uh, I sensed from day one with him, and it made it enjoyable to coach him is because, you know, he had that drive to be a great player.